Okay, so we're continuing on with integration now. The kind of integrals you've seen so far are called indefinite integrals. They look like this. And they finish with the plus C at the end. Now, you've had some questions where you've had to work out what that C is, given extra information. Um, but these are defined as indefinite integrals. What we're going to move on to today is looking at definite integrals. Now just have a little think about what we've done so far and what it means graphically. When we did differentiation, that led us to being able to find the gradient. When we do integration, the opposite of differentiation, what that gives us is the area under a curve. So we have this curve here, y equals 3x squared. If we, different, sorry, if we integrate, we'll get that area that's underneath there. So what's happening here is we've got these limits put on the integral. So between 0 and a, a just being some number that we've defined there on the graph. And if we integrate between those limits, then we get the area under the curve. So these here are the limits that we put at the top and bottom of that integral sign. This makes it a definite integral. So let's see this in practice. Our definite integral gives us the area under a curve between two limits. So here we have an example. We're looking at the curve 3x squared plus 5. And we're finding this area under the curve between 1 and 2. So we integrate as usual. Now you'll notice something a little bit different here. There's no c. We've got the x cubed plus 5x. We don't need the plus c now because that's only when we've got an indefinite integral where we don't really know what's, uh, what that value of c is. For this purpose, when you have limits, you don't need that c because later on you do a sub subtraction that cancels out the c. You'll see what I mean in a moment. And you'll also notice we've got these square brackets around our answer that we can put our limits on the right-hand side of those in order to evaluate them. So now what we do with those limits is we substitute them into that formula. So you can see the, the top limit goes in first, and then you put in the bottom limit, and you subtract one from the other. That subtraction is like working out the area up until the 2, and then the area up to the 1, and taking them away to see what the difference is. So here we get our answer of 12. Let's have a look at a couple of examples. So here we have this happening. So we've got our integral between 2 and 5 of 8x cubed plus 9x squared dx. So we integrate as normal. We don't need the c. We put it with square brackets around it and we transfer those limits of the 2 and the 5 over to the square brackets. Next step is to substitute in the 5, substitute in the 2 and subtract those answers. Okay, next question. Here we've got negative limits. We do exactly the same as before. We're just doing a little reverse chain rule on that integral in the bracket there. Substituting the limits that we've got, that minus 1 and minus 2. Work out what that gives us, which is some rather large numbers this time. Now, you'll notice with this one we've actually got a minus. You see, when we did that subtraction, we came out with a minus number. Now, since we're talking about areas, we're not interested in that minus. We just want the absolute value. So our last thing is just to write down that area without the minus. Okay, we've got one more example to find this shaded area on the diagram. So we are going to integrate between 2 and 3. Do 
just reading off that 2 and 3 from the diagram, substitute in, do your subtraction, and get your final answer.